Hello everyone, I am back. Sip of water. Sorry for wasting your time with the water break, but let's get started. This is Dr. Garrick. We are learning labor economics, specifically labor demand, and we'll learn about Marshall's rules. So these are rules about labor demand elasticity. These usually these are things that you see in your multiple choice exams or exam questions. So Let's just go back to labor demand elasticity, right? We learned about labor demand elasticity and it is a negative number, right? In the long run, it is more elastic. So if you look at labor demand curve, let's do our labor demand curve, okay? So you have a labor, de oh gosh, it's happening again. So hopefully it doesn't happen. So this is employment, wage rate, labor demand curve. Oh, I did my best. All right, so, so more elastic labor demand curve, for instance, D0 is less uh, elastic, so it's inelastic. More elastic labor demand curve is flatter, something like this. This is more, more elastic. This is more inelastic in comparison to each other. Of course, elasticity changes along a demand curve too. Anyways, let's not go there. But labor demand curve is more elastic, right? It's flatter. So that means if there's a wage change, I am going to respond more. If there's a wage increase as an employer, I'm going to drop my labor by a lot. If the elasticity of demand for the firm's output is greater, so more stuff I'm selling has elastic demand. What does it mean? If I increase the price of the product I'm selling, people are going to cut it way back down. For instance, super luxury cars. If I increase the price of a BMW, double it, people are going to, let's not double it, but like 20% 20, uh, 20 increase in the BMW prices randomly. The demand for it is going to decline for more than 20%. And that's going to affect my labor demand. So I'm going to cut my labor demand way down. Okay. So that's one. Second, labor demand is more elastic, flatter, like D1. Okay. When labor shares in the total cost of production is greater. So labor is already making a lot, a huge part of my total cost. I am literally labor intensive production that means i use fewer capital lots of workers so the price of labor goes up it's gonna hit me more so i'm going to respond more more elastic labor demand the last one is if the elasticity of supply of other factors of production such as capital is greater hmm. so if the elasticity of supply of capital is greater so price of capital goes up right the supply of capital goes up even more in terms of uh, percentage. So then you are going to cut down your labor demand if the price of labor goes up. Does it make sense? I hope it does. All right. So these are the Marshall's rules. Um, memorizing, you know, I don't like memorizing because for some reason my brain cannot keep certain information memorized. So for me, it needs to make sense. I need to learn these Marshall's rules. So what I do is I write them down and I actually literally um, imagine, like I think about scenarios just like I talked about these different scenarios. Okay, I'll see you in part 10. We are going to do a policy application. This is like California's overtime regulation. Suddenly, California's overtime regulation started covering everybody. It used to cover only females. And it started covering men and women. We'll see what happens when that's the case. And next part will be the last part of labor demand chapter. I'll see you then. Bye.